What is going on everyone? Jason from YouTube here talking about when I'm going to sell my AMC shares. It's always not financial advice, not a financial advisor, just some guy from YouTube. So here's the deal. AMC, I have added to my position way too much during the dip today. Uh, it just kept dipping and dipping. As I was looking at the chart, it's like, this is just gonna be about the bottom. I added in way too many shares. I'm on a maintenance call, but usually Schwab gives me about four days before they come in and close out my position. And so I am living what the hedge funds are about to. It's really an exciting place to be, where it's like, hey, you owe $20,000. You can either close out your positions or add 20 Gs. And it's like, well, I don't have 20 Gs. Otherwise, I would have put it in and bought another 20 Gs. But to say all that, my exit strategy for AMC is very simple. After the shorts have covered. And I know that this was massively debated today. I was watching Matt Kors on my TV. I was watching Meet Kevin on my iPhone. And then I see these comments. Oh, Meet Kevin just said this. Matt's saying this. Meet Kevin makes a follow-up. Matt makes a follow-up. And it's like, we're starting, we're, we're, we're trying to whittle off nothing to a point. We're trying to start a fight. And here's the deal. A lot of this stuff, we've never been down this road before, right? Like, and, and people say, well, what about Volkswagen? Okay, Porsche owned all of Volkswagen's shares. So it wasn't a, a massive ape army of retail investors. It was a company attempting a takeover of another company. And even back in January with GameStop, that we are not the same crew that did that, right? Like there is still a large portion who were in GameStop who are still 100% in GameStop. And again, I know some of us are like, hey, I was there. Like I was there too. Like I'm not saying that, that we weren't there but it's different this time around. That there are more people live streaming the market all throughout the day, every single day, showing every little bit of information. There are people that are taking this personal, right? Like who sends stuff to any hedge fund, you know, five months ago when, the, when this happened with GameStop, right? And now we're sending them bananas, we're parking out in front, we're buying billboards, like all that stuff is new. This is next level. And it's, I think it's making the AMC squeeze case even stronger, right? And again, am I here to say it's the floor is 100,000 or 500,000? It's possible, I'll say that. It is possible that there are several videos, there are several links breaking down all the math and it is completely possible if, if we all hold. But here's how quickly it breaks down, right? We know that there's somewhere in the ballpark of four million shareholders, right? And, and, and I would say that that number is probably constantly growing. And so let's say we're at four point, we'll just stay four, for easy math. We're at four million. If each of us only sell, only, only sell five little shares, that's 20 million shares. And so the average hedge fund could return 20 million shares buy those shares back, close out a short position. And if we sold, the price stays even. That we let him off the hook. And then if we sell another five and do it again, we get in a really bad position really quick. And so even the smallest scalp of, hey, I'm only gonna sell two shares. Or think about the guys who are holding a thousand shares or 10,000 shares. If, if you thought about it as percentages, I'm only gonna sell 10%. I own 100 shares, I'm only gonna sell 10. What about the guy who owns 10,000 shares? And he sells 1,000. And multiply that by 2 million or 3 million. And how quickly the hedge funds are basically let off the hook by a very small amount of people selling off a very small amount of shares relative to the whole uh, float, relative to the 500 million shares that we know is out there. So it, this can quickly, not get to 100,000 as quickly as it could get to 100,000. So again, just want to be completely open and honest. Again, I know that every YouTuber has their own audience. Obviously, I got my you know 12,000 of you guys and hopefully this video does well, get 500, 1,000, 1,500 views. And there are people saying, hey, 
Make sure you post it on your Patreon when you sell. Hey, make sure you put it on your Facebook group. Make sure you put it on Discord. Make sure you know you make a video. Make sure you text me. Make sure you tweet me. And so if anyone gives out the sell flag, it could go very quickly. And so right now, we're seeing a very slow organic growth, right? And I, maybe I'll take that back. We are seeing a, an organic growth, not slow because this is going very quickly. But when we cross the $60 threshold or the $70 threshold, it will not be that big because we've been there before. And then if we go to 75 a week later or 80 a week later, it's not really that difficult to hold because we've been holding so long and the price is going up very slowly. And, and we've done this before. But what happens when the price is sitting at 70 and you wake up in the middle of the day, you check it, you get a text, you get a tweet, and the price is at 500 or the price is at 600 and then the price comes rolling back to 200 how tempted are you to sell or if it goes to 600 back to 200 then back up to 600 how tempted are you to sell and maybe you can withstand but can all 4 million people withstand and so the battle that we're that we're going into it's very psychological and again there have been people sounding the rallying cry YouTubers with, with hundreds of, uh, of subscribers, YouTubers with hundreds of thousands of subscribers saying, hey, this is the game plan and this could happen if everybody holds. And those are all true statements. So going back to the purpose of this video, I do not want to drag this out too long. When am I going to sell? I'm going to sell when I feel like an upward percentage of the hedge funds have closed out their shorts. So 80%, 90% of hedge funds have closed out their position. What is going on now? Again, we talked about earlier, meet Kevin, that yeah, there is some truth that hedge funds do close their positions. And then a day or two later, they open their positions back up. And so we are constantly seeing, um, and I guess think of it as like a, uh, one of those balls, uh, uh, stress balls, where you go in the stress, and then you let it back out and you do it again. And so the hedge funds are constantly saying, okay, it's over. And then they jump right back into it. Okay, it's over. And they jump right back into it. And the hard part is that it is very difficult to get up-to-date real-time information on just what the short percentage is. So even the best data that we have, the Ortex, the S3, all of it, that sometimes it can still be delayed. And sometimes it's just not accurate that the brokers, the prime brokers who are reporting are not necessarily always giving honest feedback. And obviously it's to their advantage not to. And then you have other companies like Seeking Alpha and uh, Motley Fool and all these other companies that are basically not giving the best information. And you got a guy like Jim Cramer who has a massive following because he's on TV, who's again, not necessarily giving the best information. And, and then there are some people who again, have massive YouTube followings who are just not buying into the movement quite like we are. And so again, not that they're sabotaging or they're just saying, I don't think it's gonna happen. And I think they're saying that because they haven't done their research. So what am I gonna sell? I'm gonna sell when I feel like 80, 90% of the hedge funds have closed their position. I think it will be very obvious at that time. Um, again, if we look back at GameStop, there were several rallies, right? That like GameStop is sitting at 30, rallies up to 100, comes back. Rallies up to 200, comes back. Rallies up to 300, comes back. Rallies up to five and comes back. And then even if you hold GameStop the whole time through, like GameStop has closed above $200 for months now. And GameStop started a little bit higher than where uh, AMC was at during this time. And so, you know, even if you hold through the whole time, right? If you're holding out for 100,000, we don't get there. It's like, oh man, what, what happened here? There is still an opportunity where AMC's new price could be sitting around $300, $350, $400, which again, for most of us is still massively life-changing money. And so again, my plan, um, I am not planning on selling anytime soon. Um, again, that's knock on wood that the, that the close doesn't, uh, or the, the squeeze doesn't start tomorrow. Again, for me, I like this thing going on because I know that every single day that I hold, it's costing the hedge funds millions and millions of dollars. So if we don't squeeze till October, November, December, that's fine by me. Um, 
obviously the vote comes into play if we go into 2022 and i have another video on that feel free to, to go back on the channel and watch that why i'll be voting or if i've cast my vote yet but anyways uh, let me know in the comments below what your strategy is what you're looking for what your indicators are if you have a price target um you know again no judgment here if you say hey i'm selling at ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars before the hundred thousand dollar squeeze because i'm gonna get out before anybody you can say it safe place i promise i will not flame you i will not block you um, and i will not draw too many attentions to your comments anyways thank you guys so much for watching see you all in my next video